was the trial that horrified the nation. But now a campaign to fundraise for Lucy Letby's appeal has claimed the nurse's conviction may represent the greatest miscarriage of justice the UK has ever witnessed. A former nurse was, of course, sentenced to a whole life order after being found guilty of murdering seven babies and trying to kill another six, making her Britain's most prolific child killer of modern times. Letby's legal team has not yet confirmed whether they plan to return to court, but successful appeals against similar sentences are extremely rare. The campaigners who argue she didn't have a fair trial are already gathering public support for a project that they've named Science on Trial. They claim their aim is to ensure that scientific evidence is used responsibly in the criminal justice system. And it is uh, important to point out, I was uh, doing some court reporting once in a, a, a very grisly case, not of a dissimilar nature, not, not on this scale, but it was a, a similar kind of uh, crime. Uh, and, and the judge actually said to the jury uh, uh, in, in the summing up, you know, please be aware that, you know, you've heard a lot of scientific voices given evidence. Their evidence is a version of events. It's not the event. It's a version like every other witness is a version. So I understand that notion. I, I get that. However, and I spoke to a, a defence lawyer on the day when we broke the news here on Talk TV on that last Friday. Uh, one of our guests was a defence lawyer who was making this point as well. I said to him, well, that would, that would kind of work, that argument, if there were, you know, just a couple of witnesses and, and that was it. But this had dozens and dozens with th hundreds of thousands of words, tens of thousands of pages, uh, forensic evidence, details, witnesses across the board, not just scientific witnesses, you know, doctors, staffers, forensic psychology, you name it. As many people as you could put into the, the witness side of a court case were there. It would be extraordinary if they got this wrong. I think the it argument... Would be, I think it would the be extraordinary if there was a successful appeal. Hold up. I think the argument that this is a potentially a miscarriage of justice was, was because this case was effectively you know, based on circumstantial evidence. I mean, it's, it's, it was the longest, you know, criminal trial in, in the UK's history, but also no one ever saw her do it. It really didn't have any direct witnesses. There was never, you didn't have any fingerprints on the med, uh, medical apparatus that you can link to her. And even if you did, it's medical apparatus in a hospital. Everyone handled medical equipment. So that is the argument that they're making. However, you're right. I mean, this, they, they took a year investigating her herself. Yeah, yeah. And then they, they took, what, three years to actually, you know, prepare for the trial and all of that and, you know, cross-pollinating all the evidence that they had against the, the, the defense and all of that. So they, they were very meticulous with this trial because they know how it would look. And I'd be very surprised if this appeal is successful because of how meticulously, uh, you know, the prosecution combed through all of their evidence and really presented it to the, the jury. Yeah. And, you know, they did acquit her of, of a couple of charges as well. So they didn't, you know, find yeah. her guilty for a couple of the charges. I think the person who's, who is launching this uh, campaign is the biggest idiot in the UK. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think it's... They're American. Oh, yeah, well, oh, there you go then. Case They're point. definitely idiots. They're American. <laughs> no offence, Michael. I used to live over there. Um, but the, I'm not it, American. It's, fine. it's It's an offence to the lives that were lost and the parents. Mm. There's no way this should ever come back again and she should get an appeal. Like, it's done. Just because you don't agree with what the verdict was doesn't mean that yeah. you're right. Also, I'm not sure that there are grounds for appeal just because you didn't like the verdict. I think the grounds for Correct. appeal have to include mm. either new evidence mm -hmm. or some different well, thing that wasn't put before yeah. that particular trial. They, I don't think you can just go, we think that the decision of the jury was wrong. They seem to be saying that um, relying heavily on one particular medical witness and the evidence that he gave is something that they don't particularly agree with. The interpretation that he gave particularly about whether insulin was administered mm. and whether these these babies died as a result of insulin because they mm. hadn't had post-mortems or they haven't... They, the argument was that they weren't quite sure. I mean, the only bit of me that... And I agree with all of you, but I remember that case when the professor who was later struck off gave evidence and put that mother who'd lost two babies to sudden um, infant death syndrome and she got put in prison for murder because of the evidence of, what was his yeah. name, Professor something Flowers, yeah, whatever. Could, yeah. and, and then he was later struck off and he was later, you know, com completely, you know, all respect, uh, went for him. And so, so there is a case of looking at these cases if somebody has been sent to jail mm. for something they haven't done. I don't think that's True. necessary. I'm, I'm no think, expert, but no. I just remember that case. But I still think that in order to actually have a successful attempt to make an appeal, you must present something new. You can't True. just say, 
say, I don't like the way that evidence yes. is interpreted. And also, I don't like the jury's as decision. Esther said, the reason yeah. it took 10 months was because they knew that these yeah. criticisms would be... Right. So they needed to get a more collective mm. body of, All right, of evidence. I'm